Welcome to the show. This week we are looking at, well, what's inside this box. It is a HD video capture device that allows you to capture your gameplay from HDMI or component video, uh, but in particular, HDMI input that allows you to capture to a USB flash drive. No need for a computer to capture your, your gameplay. Whoa, I don't have to plug it into my computer. Nope, nope, nope. You just plug in a USB flash drive, push record, and you're rolling. That's it. Uh, I'm, I'm looking at this for things like screencast, gameplay, all that kind of stuff. We're going to show you uh, what's inside this box in just a couple of minutes' time, and it's a great deal. It's a fantastic product as well. We've also got a way for you to be able to eliminate those pests that are going to be growing and flying around your house and buzzing around your ears and everything else. We're going to show you how to get rid of those without any chemicals. Stick around. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Our live recordings are trusted only to solid-state drives by Kingston Technology. Revive your computer with improved performance and reliability over traditional hard drives with Kingston SSDs. Category 5 TV streams live with Telestream Wirecast and Nimble Streamer. Tune in every week on Roku, Kodi, and other HLS video players. For local showtimes, visit Category5.tv. Category5.tv is a member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here, cat5.tv slash tpn and the International Association of Internet Broadcasters, cat5.tv slash iaib. Welcome to the show, everybody. This is episode number 621. It's great to have you here. Great to have you two back for a second week. Yeah. It's like the crew. We're back. We yeah, miss Jeff, awesome. but uh, it's nice to have you back as well. Yeah, it's good yeah. to be back. This is like the Henry time. It's, like, it's true. It's like, like he just disappears for a while. Yes. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> Henry's back. Last week, I got to give you kudos, man. Yeah. Getting loads of comments oh, about the fun. newsroom and your feature about uh, uh, taking us to space oh, on that was the nice you know, just it got was, back. It was, it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah <so. laughs> Lots of kudos, though, coming in saying, hey, Thanks, that, guys. Henry was on his game. So well Thanks done, sir. No. Uh, and we're looking forward to another great show this week. Yes. What have you guys been up to? Oh, you know, A week has passed. Well, I've, I've been career searching. So yes. that's, that's going really well. Good. Updates to come. But Sasha has some really important news. Oh, oh yeah. Speaking of careers, I finally finished school. Woo! Yes. Yeah. Well done. Like, as of today. She graduated grade eight, folks. She's all That's growing up. Right. <laughs> no, all so growing now up. I am officially a personal support worker, PSW, which is also That's known fantastic. as like a it's exciting. Uh, healthcare aide in some places or a personal care attendant in other places. Wow. Um, so it's been a crazy year because even though I've oh, been yeah. here like almost every single week, mm -hmm. while I am here, I'm thinking about homework. Now I'm right. Done. Yeah, it's Aww. like right? I look over and I thought she was reading like pre-reading the news and it's like she's Google docking some kind of <laughs> presentation for the following morning. Yeah. Doing I was like, what are you yeah. doing? And I'm like, oh, nothing. But you've fine. pulled it off. You've pulled it yeah. off. But you have missed a couple of weeks recently. Yes. Because of like the Be final placement. Right. The final mm -hmm. placement, which was in a facility, which was absolutely amazing. I got mm. to wow. really get a, a taste of what that aspect of the job is like. And yeah. the thing is, PSW work can be in the community or the facility or a hospital. And they're all very three different flavors of care that you would give, really. Sure. Um, so we're talking like the difference between like somebody who is pretty much self-sufficient at home yeah, yeah. going in you're going in and helping, helping them, them to like maintain their independence at home so sure. it could be somebody who is blind or has you okay. know mobility issues or something and yeah, you're going yeah. in to visit them and help them mm -hmm. in a facility of course many people are aware i mean you move to a facility when you're no longer able to live independently and right. then personal mm -hmm. support workers there take care of your needs on a more extensive basis and then in the hospital it's in a more acute situation mm. so i have been doing 220 hours we just finished 220 wow. hours in a facility it has been quite the journey this is the first time i've not worn scrubs in a while <laughs> <laughs> Well, Sasha, it's nice to know that you've pursued a career in technology, yes. hey, which we've you, you know we've been working towards so <laughs> so much over the past five years. Yes. Well, I'll oh. tell you. Okay, so usually I'm here week by week, surrounded by people who know a whole lot more than me when it comes to computers. I have found an industry where I am the computer genius. Fantastic. <laughs> <Sasha>. <laughs> but you did take you did take uh, uh, an e-paper tablet with you last last week. Yes, I did. How did that work? It out? It worked mm -hmm. out so well oh, good. yeah, yeah. It so, worked. because you can use it to jot notes I mean you chart 
outside of the person's room, obviously, so that you're not... Right, you know, right. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So you want to take notes so that you're charting appropriately. You're not relying mm -hmm. on your memory. And then you don't have paper that you need to shred and waste afterwards. But that's so good, too. Yeah. It was... Yeah, it was the talk that's of the town. Well. And speaking of technology that you have taken uh, to try... Yes. The, the, the I'm thinking about the dash cam. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is the we decided like it's either paving lek or pa paving tech. One of the two. Yeah. Yeah. I like the sound of paving tech. Paving but tech? I think it's I think I think Henry decided as paving lek. Then can it be paving lek? Pa 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 could it be yeah. Lek? Glock? Or mm -hmm. Glock? We, we'll, okay. we'll figure it out. Kay. But so One it's day. a 1080p dash cam. And it's awesome. But yeah? okay, here's the thing. It's awesome, but I'm pretty sure that it records... Well, I know it records sound. Mm -hmm. I'm pretty r sure that I can never watch any of the videos ever because I, it turns out that I'm a really bad in-car singer all the time. <laughs> and I didn't even oh. Carpool I'm karaoke. Doing, yeah, I didn't yes. realize I'm Sasha doing it, and then style. all of a sudden I'm like, oh, yeah, there it is, watching me. <laughs> so we need to get these videos. This needs to be our promo for the show. It's bad. It's oh, like amazing. Star. Yeah. So um, Johnny Landon wants to know... How it's handled the heat now. The Ooh, the week following the uh, the installation video, when we mm -hmm. we actually you installed it in your car, right? We had temperatures. Uh, we had a few days that hit about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. Yes, Whoa. like it was scorching hot. Uh, did you have any trouble? Like, okay. That's what Johnny wants to know because he's had some that he's mounted and it's hit 100 degrees and the thing is melted. Kaput. Okay, so here's the thing. I did think to myself, self, it's hot out. You yeah. should probably take this thing and put it somewhere cooler. Mm. Did I do that? No. It was um, a good idea at the time. Um, and true? it works just fine. So cool. I'm not saying that you should leave your... Is it deformed? Is it's it dripping deformed. plastic? Everything seems to be in perfect working order. It still turns on when I turn the car on. It wow, turns okay. Off. So it handled it okay. It, it, yeah. it seems to work well still. So. That's about as hot as it's going to get up, up here in Barrie, Ontario. Like we get yeah. up to about 110 Fahrenheit, right. I would say, with, at, at the very max. And right? it was hot enough for that to run through my head. Like a fleeting moment. I'm like, I should protect this camera. Didn't happen. It's but fine. Yeah. It's good. Good. Yeah, it's fine. It made it through. Very good. Now, <laughs> have you tried the parking mode? You mentioned that that seemed like something that you would like to try. Did you get a chance to give that a go? So, yes. I turned on the parking mode. Yeah. But I haven't checked to see whether or not But you didn't do it, anything with like it? I don't, like, like you I, didn't I, dance in front of the car and I just didn't see if it happened? I did even to see if it worked. Wow. Like, I turned it on. Great. And I really should look at those videos to see whether or not it's clicking on yeah, when okay. people go by. Yeah, right? yeah. So that'll be my next update is to actually take that chip. Uh, what I need to do, because it <laughs> well, records, right? The SD so I have card, to she means, silently, yes. I need to silently drive hmm. for a few hours, not singing, <laughs> so that it can record my normal, responsible self-driving. And then I can check those <laughs> clips <laughs> and see awesome. whether or not the parking. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. cool. Okay, so what are we talking oh. about? We're talking about a thirty dollar dash cam. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now uh, the, the, we've seen the price come down from two hundred dollars two years ago, yeah. and boom, 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 boom. Now for thirty dollars, you can get this paving like a dash cam 1080p it looks fantastic it works really really well oh. hasn't fallen off your dash or no. melted in the sun or anything like that it's really great for 30 bucks yeah, yeah. And here let me just tell you one random really weird thing is when i was installing it in the yeah. car i was like why is this wire so long um I'll, i i wrapped it up around yeah, the yeah. entire windshield Perfect. and down oh. under it looks it you looks wouldn't even see it. Oh, it looks look at you. So Fantastic. Amazing. Check so them out. It's cool. Cat5.tv slash dash cam. It's that simple. <laughs> Just to find <laughs> out, you know, what it is that we're talking about and see if you want to pick up something like that for yourself. I mean, having a dash cam is a great idea. Mm -hmm. If you ever do get in an accident or even somebody, like, if you're in parking mode, somebody mm -hmm. backs into you. Like, you're parallel parked and someone backs into you trying yeah. to get out. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do? You're going to look and you're going to see the scratches and be like, who did that? Mm -hmm. now. And they're long gone. Yeah. It has happened to me. And it's like, well... You know, we, we can't prove who did it. Right. So now with this, it's like the there's their license plate number. You can Not see the all. person behind the wheel. Yeah, that's all you need. You know what does work on that very mm. well? Uh, well, mm. while I was adjusting it, I accidentally dropped it just a little bit in my car. Like, sure. it's not broken. Yeah, yeah. 
but a little memo thing came up, and there's like a little file that's Don't like me. No. <laughs> you, you know how it saves? It does like the G sensor or whatever. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it? it thought you got in an accident, yeah, so, so it locks I have like the a little, like a oh, little nice. permanently saved file on my card. Which, how do you like that? Yeah. So if it you works. get in a collision, that's that that, that G sensor, sensor shock. Yeah. So cool. And it locks down the file so that it doesn't record over it. Yeah. And then that way it's like it's there. So it's uh, locked in. I I accidentally <laughs> just don't drop it too many times. Eventually you're gonna fill the card with yeah, locked just videos everything. of just you going, Oh what's funny ah. I dropped it, I'm like, they're gonna know I Can we see it. that video? <laughs> <laughs> it's locked on the card. You can't delete oh. it. It's there forever. That's the one we're gonna use for the promo. Yes. <laughs> oh, I love it. Oh, I've had a heck of a week. You know what I've been dealing with is um, I've got a customer. Uh, now, I work in cybersecurity. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, they've been hit with ransomware. And, uh -oh. and you say, well, how can that How can that happen, Robbie? How can one of your customers get hit by ransomware? There's no way you would let that happen. Right? Right? Yeah, you would think that. That's in what that you voice, think. you but would think that. Oh, exactly. Absolutely. <laughs> And and it happens because like, not everybody does the things that you recommend, and not everybody does, you know. Like I I I in category five, we have mm -hmm. said to you, the viewers, so many times, like here are here's here are the things that we recommend, yeah. like and just a you know quick recap over ten years worth of what we've been telling you mm -hmm. is like back up your stuff, and have a backup of the backup. If you have one copy of your files. That's not a backup. Mm -hmm. If you put in a USB flash drive and move all your files to it, it's not a backup. What happens if that drive fails? Same thing with your phone. Mm -hmm. Think about all the pictures and videos of you and your family on your phone. Mm -hmm. What happens if your phone gets stolen? Mm -hmm. Just to th Where think you about drop that. it. That's yeah. the data end because the real, the only real protection that you have. <clears throat> pardon me, against mm -hmm. ransomware, and I'm saying against ransomware because ransomware is going to happen anyways, mm -hmm. the only way you can thwart it mm -hmm. is to have good backups. Right. It's to yeah. be able to say, ah, oh, darn it, my files, is be they be encrypted, mm -hmm. and we got to recover from our backup. Right. So there's like a couple hours of copying files over, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. It's gonna, if it's going to happen, you want to be ready for it and have those files backed up and totally. backed up of the backed up, mm -hmm. right? And what I mean by that is, well, if your backup is plugged into the, the, the unit that gets right. encrypted by ransomware, mm -hmm. well, not, your backup, even if it's redundant, it's is also work. now encrypted. Yeah. So you need like something that you like remove yeah. physical yeah physical and, and something that you rotate and something that you yeah absolutely and uh, even if it's not a physical thing there are lots of great cloud services out there that you mm -hmm. can back up to and i'm not saying OneDrive or dropbox are backup solutions they are not because they too if you mount them to your drive to your computer and your computer gets hit with ransomware guess what it goes out onto your OneDrive and encrypts your OneDrive Actually, with Dropbox, you can reverse it now. So yeah, they have a new they've got that versioning of the files. Yeah, so That's like, nice. luckily they're starting to catch on to that. So yep. like, even if you do have it a could happen, so let's be ready. Yeah, you can mm -hmm. reverse back, but yeah. still, like, you don't want to have to rely on a system like and that. that. And I'll be honest with you, Henry. So if you're relying on something like that to be mm -hmm. your backup, so think about Dropbox as the example. And, and yeah. other companies are c cluing in and saying, hey, let's have file versioning. Mm -hmm. Let's say you've got 500 gigs worth of files. Yes. Okay. And they've all been encrypted. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't have a local copy or access to a local company who has your cloud backup that you can go grab a copy from them. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're going to have to, what are you going to do? Like revert 500 gigs worth of files and wait it. for that and then resync them down and let's do it i have a lot oh. of coffee let's do it yeah let's <laughs> get started because we're going to be out of business for the rest of the month you yeah. know what i mean mm -hmm. uh, so you know there are so many different things that we've reiter reiterated on the show mm -hmm. and that's the first is backup 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 you've got to have good security as far as the software that you have on your computer goes mm -hmm. and that's why i support eset and i say like have proper business anti-malware on your system, but here's a key thing about ransomware that you don't necessarily think of if you're not mm -hmm. familiar with how it works, is nine times out of ten, how does ransomware get in, but through a person. Right. Okay. Ooh. Do you have remote desktop enabled? That's point number two. Mm -hmm. 
if you do, turn it off. Don't ever use remote desktop. If you need to have remote access, mm -hmm. install something, sign up for a service. You're probably going to have to pay for it. Pay for it. It's worth it. It's extra layer. Get free. a service that has two-factor authentication. You know what? Google Remote Desktop has two-factor authentication. It's free. Mm -hmm. So you there have you no excuse to have Remote Desktop turned on any longer. Cool. If Remote Desktop is open and turned on and they can remote and you can remote in from home, well, guess what? So can the hacker. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to brute force that thing out the wazoo and chances are pretty good. Okay. You don't have a super strong password. And guess what? At 2.30 in the morning, you probably don't know that they broke that password yeah. and got into your system. Right. So what is the, so this brings us to point number three. Now, I said you got to have good anti-malware protection. Mm hmm. If Up somebody, to date. <laughs> malware yes, protection. but yes. they've remoted in through remote desktop. What's the first thing this malware distributor who mm -hmm. wants to make money from you is going to do? Any guesses? Turn off your malware. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. Bang on. Yes. Your anti-malware. Yeah. So if you've got antivirus, say, yeah. uh, is the old term. So anti-malware, you've got ESET running in the taskbar. Yeah. Guess what? Right click, turn off, yeah. exit. Are you Easy. sure you want to turn it off? Yes. So then it comes down to having like uh, centralized management for that anti-malware with a policy that says the user cannot turn off the antivirus, the anti-malware. Uh -huh. They can't disable the firewall. The rules are in place and they are set by the administrator. Mm -hmm. And the user can't turn it off. And that's, that can be an inconvenience if the IT guy is away and your accounting software is being blocked by the firewall. But hey, work it out, people. It's a lot more important to know that if somebody ever broke in, that they cannot turn off the anti-malware, which they need to do first in order to install their ransomware. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Don't Makes have, sense to me. Yeah. I mean, so th these are just some really quick points. Yeah. And I just say them because, you know, this is what, I, this is what I'm dealing with right now. And it's, it's just amazing. So. Keeps you busy. When this happens to you at work, yeah. do you just send them links to the show? No. <laughs> just, like, to the YouTube video? Um, yeah. Here's some things. By the way, probably. I'm also a famous YouTuber. And you <laughs> should probably watch my show. Yeah. <laughs> no. Brad. There have no. been times when people have said, are you that Robbie Ferguson? Like, and gosh. then I'm like, yeah, that's me. Here's a couple of links. And you know, that, that has happened. <laughs> that's cool. But rarely enough that I can still, you know, I still enjoy uh, oh. my private life. And that's Your private good. life. Yeah. Yeah. Superstar. So, hey, be smart. And Ameridroid is saying, like, here's uh, uh, an article on Ameridroid. Uh, they call it the Amera blog. Hmm. And they're working on, Ameridroid is working on some SBC solutions to, yeah. like, hey, let's, when, when Bo was here, he talked about, hey, let's have two hard drives. One of them is your backup. The other one is a backup of the backup. And that backup is not accessible over Samba. Perfect. Fantastic. Perfect. Yeah. Um, then we can start looking at redundancy solutions as well. Like let's mm -hmm. have a let's throw a RAID one in the mix and have some backup that is also redundant. So if a hard drive fails, then you yeah. also have redundancy there. Mm -hmm. So knock on wood. Yeah, yeah. Hey, if you are not sure if you're safe against things like ransomware, I want you to e email the show. I don't know what that noise was. <laughs> it's, it's all the questions coming in. Yes. <laughs> Is the spirit of the awesomeness. <laughs> um, email the show live at category5.tv, and uh, I want to hear from you, and I mm -hmm. want to help you. Not, not even professionally, just as a friend and as a, like, just uh, to, to get you started. I'm just sharing stories, right? Like, yeah. to avoid the situation in the first place, right? We got to understand, ransomware is a whole new can of worms, even though it's been around for a few years. Mm -hmm. it's a, it, people still don't understand, and I say this generally, but uh, people don't understand how it works. And don't right. realize that your mm -hmm. antivirus is not going to stop ransomware. That's mm -hmm. not how ransomware works. It's not a virus. Yeah. It's like a different food I'm group, right? Like, bread isn't fruit, right? I so, I have no idea what he's talking about. <laughs> I'm talking about security. I'm talking about fruit. <laughs> you got a problem with fruit? <laughs> I don't know. Mm. Email live at category5.tv if you've got some questions. So, that, hey, that's what my week has consisted of. Henry, what have you been up to, man? Uh, I'm, I'm becoming all grown up and uh, you said starting a career. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited for that. I can't say with whom or where, oh. what, when, oh, okay. yet. All right. T top secret classified. Wow. It's going to be awesome. But no, 
Hopefully, it can still be here in Barry, so I can yeah. hang out. We with want you here on the Wednesday nights, man. Five. Oh yeah, we of want course. you here on I'll the Wednesday nights. <laughs> Not in spirit, but yeah, no, it's been really exciting. I'll keep you all updated, but nice. Um, some exciting things are happening, and yeah, still flying, getting my commercial good, license. Good, good. You know, every time I don't know if we're if the the flight like lanes are just above the studio but yeah. every time just after the show is done and everybody has left there's a plane that flies oh yeah that's yeah, fine oh, home henry's, <laughs> heading, henry's <laughs> off guys later. Henry's i used home. to take my bike and yeah. <laughs> he just flies his plane You're like, that's hey guys, it. what's up that's it <laughs> Well, yeah. that's cool. Uh, we've got some really cool devices to look at tonight. Now, first of all, we've got a capture device that's going to help you to be able to do your screencasts or even gameplay videos. But there is one catch. Mm -hmm. You don't have to have a computer to capture the video. Whoa. That's a big catch because that's going to save you a ton of money. Yes. And it makes it a lot more portable. It makes it a lot more easy for you. Oh. And uh, we're going to be taking a look at that right after this short break. Stick around. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. Now, before the break, I just made a quick mention about the capability to be able to capture video without yes. the need of a computer. Yes. How? Tell us this magical way. Oh, are you guys ready for this? Yes. Back on episode number 497, Jeff and I actually showed a device that captures 1080p video from HDMI or RCA component um, connections. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it's unique in that it captures to not a computer, so it's not like a, a traditional computer capture device that requires a pretty high-end computer and a lot of hard drive space. Mm -hmm. Instead, you simply plug in your USB flash drive or Whoa. your USB external hard drive and push record. Huh. It, could it be that simple? Like, remember the days of the cassette tape wow. where you could just tune in the radio station and push record and then it was <laughs> recording? It's that... It's that, could it be that simple? Uh, it's blast from so, the past. Yeah, here we are a couple years later, and it's like, okay, well, how have things progressed? Yeah. yeah. And that's where the AGP Tech HD video capture device, Whoa. which is actually linked at cat5.tv slash AGP Tech. And I say that not as an advertisement, but I want you to be able to get to the same one so that you know what one we're looking at. Mm -hmm. There are several different ones. Now, the one that I'm linking to has the component option as well. So mm -hmm. it captures HDMI or component. That's good. But there is one step down as well. So if you mm -hmm. look at and you're wondering, well, why is this one $10 cheaper? Well, the other one only has HDMI. Oh, I okay. figure for $10, I'm going to add the component edition so right. that I can plug in my retro gaming systems as well. And there uniquely, what's cool about it mm -hmm. is that it then takes that RCA input from, say, an old VCR that you're dubbing uh, totally. VHS tape or, you, you know, whatever, an, an old, uh, say, a Nintendo uh, Wii, oh, right, okay. which doesn't yeah. have HDMI connectivity. Mm -hmm. So you plug it into there, and it actually then the HDMI output goes to the HDMI in on your TV. Cool. It, ad it adds it HDMI capability to your Wii. That's awesome. And so on and so forth. So let's get into the box uh, before right. I get talking too much about it. Let's see how this thing looks. Never been opened, folks. Okay. It's a good box. Yeah, good that's box. a nice, nice box right there. Oh, oh, and it says on the side, what does it say, Henry? You read it. It says, please do not record copyrighted material. Since you said it nicely. Please. We won't, we won't do oh, that. Okay. Uh, standalone capture to USB disk. No PC required. One key capture. Easy to use. 1080p HD video capture. 30 frames per second. Nice. With editing software and you can share it on YouTube. Now, Yay. I don't really care about the editing software. I'm just going to it records to yeah. MP4 files, so okay. hey, it, go. uh, it's going to work with any suite. All right, there you go, guys. Look at that. All right, oh. let's push open the bag. It's so small yet so powerful. All right, what do we have? We've got a USB host which is where we're actually going to plug in our USB flash drive, mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to record to. Cool. Just like that done. We've got a line input, a mic input, a line output, and a record button. What? Could it be as simple as that? Oh my gosh. Okay, well, what else <laughs> do we have? Look at this. AGP Tech HD video capture. And oh on gosh. the back, here we go. 
We've got HDMI input, HDMI output, YPBPRN, and DCN. Yeah. Now, so this, I imagine they've got a breakaway cable. Let's, uh, let's go further in the box before I talk too much about it and see what, uh, what else we have. Mm -hmm. We've got quick instructions here. Uh, we've got the very first thing. Here's their vendor email. If you have any questions or trouble, click here, send an email, and it gives you some information about it. Mm -hmm. Back in the box. Oh. There's a box in the box. A box within the box. Oh, that's so cool. It's oh. a mini DVD. Oh, what, it, what is this madness? <laughs> what? It's so tiny. It's so, it's so cute. cute. Oh, my goodness. It's baby. Yeah. All right. We've got an HD video capture manual. I'm actually curious about the yes. line input. Well, I wonder, can you, can you use external hard drives with this too? Yeah. Or, okay, cool. It's got to be, I would use an SSD. Yeah, totally. Because it's got to be able to be powered by the USB port. And mm -hmm. I doubt it's going to be providing four amps of power. You don't want a big 3.5 inch spinning RAID array yeah. powered off of your USB port. If it's got separate, uh, like a power brick, for the hard drive, then mm -hmm. that's fine. But uh, if not, I would stick with SSD. Cool. All right, it says it has two input modes, HDMI component. Mm -hmm. It'll automatically recognize which one you're using. No, nice. need, no need to switch it manually. Just uh, please do not connect both sources at the same time. It's about yeah. to say that. Yeah, <laughs> that's all. So just keep that in mind. Um, all right, do we have any information? Everything else is pretty straightforward, but what I'm not clear on is the line input. Now, it's mm -hmm. shown in a diagram where the input output is like just, yeah, just like you would expect, connecting it into your sound system or anything like that. So I don't know if you're going to need that. Hey, whatever. But I do like mm -hmm. that it has a microphone input. So in fact, nice. what I've done is I've picked up for six bucks a headset microphone that has... So professional. Yeah. The three... So pro at six bucks. <laughs> Just to demonstrate, hey, this can be done really, really cheaply. That's and awesome. why would I want a six dollar microphone that has uh, a 3.5 millimeter plug? which is now going to go into here. So think about this. Okay. So if I'm doing gaming, mm -hmm. or if I want to do um, screencasts, for example, mm -hmm. now, as I'm doing it and recording to my USB flash drive, I can be talking into this microphone, and right. it's going to be presumably <laughs> picking up and recording. And I look, you look buy this now, like everybody. <laughs> buy it now. <laughs> Uh, you look like you're about to do a music concert. I know. You think that's what it is? Yeah. Mr. Uh, it kind of reminded me more of like the Chop Chop guy or whatever yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, wow guy. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we do have, uh, mm. it came with a short HDMI cable. That's great. Cool. Uh, it has, there's the breakaway cable. So we've got RCA. So we've got left and right audio. Mm-hmm and component. So um, we'd have to play around, see which one is going to give us uh, V, mm -hmm. like yellow, uh, but it is Beautiful. component. So that would work with like some of the some of the early day high end. Like, did the PlayStation not have component? I think it, it did. I the believe so. Don't I think so. Uh, not the first one, second? but maybe the second. PlayStation 2? Yeah, before HDMI. I think, yes, it I think they did offer it. Uh, but that's, yeah, that's for kind of retro compatibility. That's, that's another story. This is retro compatibility. So it, mm -hmm. it, this was a, an extra 10 bucks to have this capability, and Worth it gives it. you RCA inputs for audio and video. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm pretty much just going to use the HDMI in mm -hmm. and the HDMI out. And as I say, you can put this in between. So right now you've got your... Your, uh, is it PlayStation 4? Yeah. Yeah? PS4. So you've got HDMI coming out of that into mm -hmm. your TV. Mm -hmm. Well, instead, plug it into here. Right. And then plug this into the TV. And you can press record at any time and be recording your gameplay onto your USB flash drive while still watching it on the TV. That is right? awesome. So it, it, it allows the pass through. Now, looking at the device that we looked at back on episode number 497, one of the things I really didn't like about it but I didn't realize at the time. Mm -hmm. I used it for a while, mm -hmm. yeah. and one thing that I didn't realize was that, hey, the power input was proprietary. Really? Sometimes that doesn't bother me, but when I lost the cable... Oh. That kind of sucks. And couldn't find it anywhere? Oof. And I mean anywhere. Like, I couldn't <laughs> find it. Probably got thrown away. Disappeared. Like, okay. maybe in a box of wires or something. Uh, but I couldn't find it. Like, I couldn't buy it. You can't right. get on Amazon and find that 
part and buy it. So one thing I do appreciate here is that this is not a proprietary yes. input. This is just a barrel connector. That's awesome. And Thank you. that Universal. means I can replace it yes. and it's not going to be a problem. Let's nice. open this package and see what we're actually looking at here for power. So nicely organized. Mm -hmm. Okay, so power is simply 5 volts, 2 amps. Nice. So <laughs> you can find that. You can power this from a, an Odroid power yeah, adapter. Yeah, I mean, it is. Four, that's, four that's all it is. The house. You already have one. Yeah, nice. you already have a 5 volt adapter for sure with a barrel also. connector. So especially if you're into SBCs, you, you definitely have that. Welcome. So that is literally all there is to it. So now mm -hmm. I can plug in my headset microphone and I can plug in my USB flash drive. Mm -hmm. And I can then start doing my computing or my gaming, and all I have to do is just push that record button. So amazing. And it's going to start <laughs> recording to the card. It records 1080p 30 frames per second, like I mentioned. It is an mm -hmm. MP4 container, H.264. Uh, Okay. So Good. it's like a format that everybody can work with. It's a CPU format. It's it's going to work on any system. Uh, and it's been around long enough that pretty much any editor will work with it. Uh, but there is that little itty-bitty CD as well, which oh, comes with like software or yeah, Super some kind of Well, I, I have software. a question in regards to like editing. <laughs> if you have everything. an optical drive, yeah. Because um, when it comes down to editing and stuff, like for like videos and stuff, mm -hmm. you're talking about a second audio source. So if you're using a headset, yeah, is the audio going to be within the same MP4 file, or is it going to be a separate MP3? Yeah, I think it's something? just going to like mix it in. So okay. how is that going to be if you've got like your your gameplay music blaring and you're yeah. trying to talk over it? I think it's you're going to have to find that balance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then probably in post process kind of equalize mm -hmm. things and, and clean it up the way that you want it to be. I don't I don't think it's going to be as fancy as like multi-channel like it surround sound. But hey, you know what? It's a yeah. great it's yeah. a great piece of kit. Right? For me, what I love about it, so thinking about that, Henry, mm -hmm. most of the stuff I'm going to be doing is not going to be gameplay. Mm -hmm. Most of the stuff I'm going to be doing is connecting this up to a laptop with HDMI output yeah. and pl plugging in the microphone. There's no audio coming off the laptop. Mm -hmm. And instead, what I'm doing is I'm walking people through screencasts. Right. There we go. How perfect is this to be able to put that in your laptop bag? Mm-hmm. Take yes. that with you anywhere your laptop is and just sit down and say, okay, I'm going to record a screencast now, plug in my USB flash drive, plug in my microphone, plug in the power, plug in the HDMI, press record. There you go. And you're done. And you just do it. And then just bring it into your whatever editor and, and you're done. There you go. You're good. Do you keep in mind your USB flash drive, according to the specifications, now I haven't tried anything else but I haven't needed to. But the drive does have to be formatted FAT32, oh, okay. which sounds kind of old school. And I was like, what? Yeah. No XFAT, no NTFS. I did read one review that said maybe NTFS will work. Well, I can't vouch for that because I haven't tried it yet. Right. Feel free to format your drive NTFS, try it, see if it works. But know that FAT32 is the one that the manufacturer recommends. FAT32, of course, has a 2 gig file size limit. So what happens when you hit that file size limit? Like two gigs is like, I don't know, 16 minutes worth of video, yeah. I, something like that. So if you're mm. going to so record So what does happen? Does it just end it or does it delete the whole thing? Is it corrupted It just explodes. That, it's just, like, yeah, it just this literally blows up. Probably no, makes a new file. It do, exactly. Just like, oh, your, nice. just like your dash cam. Right. What it does is it, re it rolls to the next file name. Oh, file okay. number, right? right. Awesome. So you're going to end up, so if you record an hour's worth of video, yeah. don't worry. Yeah, it has a two gig limit, but it's going to just create a bunch of sequential two gig files, which you then piece together in your editor. Right. And it's going to be seamless and beautiful. So, yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. So that's not a flaw in any way. No, I don't think so. I think the only way that you could consider that a flaw, if you will, is that you're also limited. You can't have like a 12 terabyte drive connected to it, right? right. FAT32 doesn't support it. But mm. that said, who needs it? You're going to be recording and then importing it to your computer. This is a four gig card. I can record several hours worth of video probably on this. Right. So, um, you know, no, no mm -hmm. harm done. I'm, I'm going to transfer it onto my computer yeah. to edit it. So, yeah. um, But if you have any questions about it, and we encountered this with the last one when we reviewed it, is that a lot of people had questions for it. Um, mm -hmm. They weren't sure, you know, this or that, and wanted us to try a couple things, and I'm willing to do that. Like, there what happens if I plug it into a certain device? One quick caveat, if, if I may, before we wrap up the review, mm -hmm. is that the HDMI, of course, does not strip away copy protection. So if the content that you're streaming into it 
yeah. is copy protected, mm -hmm. it's still going to be susceptible to those copy protections. Okay. Right. That said, you could put in line. Sorry, I'm not used to having <laughs> having a little bit of whiskers on my face, so I can. Nice. <laughs> there's a little bit of a rustle. <laughs> uh, you could put in line a decoder. So like a, you can get a lot of different uh, splitters, like HDMI splitters, strip mm -hmm. away copy protection, and that will then allow you to use it. Uh, I'm not endorsing or saying use it for illegal copying. I'm saying. There are probably some games on your console that you're perfectly welcome to upload videos to YouTube of you playing them, but mm -hmm. they might have copy protection, so then you have that problem. If you encounter that, just keep that in mind. It's probably the copy protection. You need to put something in between to remove copy protection, and that is not a fault of this device. That's the nature of what copy protection exactly. is. Yep. You know, that's, no. <laughs> that's how it is. So there it is. It's the AG, AGP Tech HD video capture device. It's 1080p, 30, 30 frames. And uh, this is the next gen version. And uh, I look forward to doing some casts with it. And you're going to see all kinds of videos coming off of this in the next little while. And uh, and then you'll know, you know how the quality looks. Cool. But give it a try. Cat5.tv slash AGP Tech. You know the policies at Amazon. If you're not happy, you can always send it back. But uh, I think you're just going to yeah. love it. Yeah, you'd yeah. be happy. I think so. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, Sasha, if we can head over to your newsroom, if yes, you are all set. certainly. All right. Here are the stories we're covering this week in the Category 5.TV newsroom. Facebook is facing a legal fight over their facial recognition technology. Hyundai has released a version of its Sonata Hybrid that has solar panels to help charge its battery. Google's health so-called augmented reality microscope has proven surprisingly accurate at detecting and diagnosing cancerous tumors in real time. Windows users, stop what you're doing because Microsoft has issued a critical warning across all versions of its platforms, including every version of Windows 10, and told users that they must act now. And Elon Musk has revealed the staggering cost of building a civilization on Mars. These stories are coming right up. Don't go anywhere. This is the Category 5.TV Newsroom, covering the week's top tech stories with a slight Linux bias. I'm Sasha Rickman, and here are the top stories we're following this week. Facebook is facing a legal fight over their facial recognition technology. A class action lawsuit has been raised against Facebook, whose appeal has been thrown out by the San Francisco court. Facebook, yada yada, privacy, such and such, Mark Zuckerberg, blah blah blah, lawsuit, payout, repeat. Yes, we're sick of it too, so we're moving on to other stories. Hyundai has released a version of its Sonata Hybrid that has solar panels to help charge its battery. The Korean car maker said up to 60% of the power for the car's battery could be supplied if the solar roof was used for six hours a day. The panels can provide enough power to propel the Sonata for 1,300 kilometers per year. Hyundai said it plans to offer the roof as an optional extra on other models as well. Hyundai says that fitting hybrids with panels that can harvest solar energy will boost fuel efficiency and lower carbon dioxide emissions. Hyundai is working on a second generation solar roof that would be semi-transparent to help light the car's cabin. Hyundai is not the first car manufacturer to use solar panels on a vehicle. The sun-powered charging systems are available as an option on the Toyota Prius and the luxury Karma Rivero is also available with one. In addition, Dutch startup Lightyear is working on an electric car that uses solar panels on its bonnet and roof to char help charge the vehicle's batteries. The solar roof equipped Sonata will be on sale in North America and Korea. Hyundai says it has no plans to sell it in other regions and they've yet to reveal the price. Hmm. Hyundai, I'm telling you. Okay. I will review this for you. <laughs> <laughs> Just put it on my little... The next review. Put it on Bring my it on little, over. like not even a Hyundai. Put it on my little spark. On my, the roof yeah, of my little spark. Just, yes. And I will, on can Cat we, 5, Can we hybridize review. your car for you? Like, like can we just buy a bunch of panels from Amazon for 100 bucks a piece? My car totally. is tiny. It's like smaller <laughs> than this table. It's a small car. I feel like it wouldn't take very many panels to make it go. It's a little motor. Let's do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah why don't we just... Yeah. <laughs> I love... Project. Like, I, mean, I know it seems almost silly that this is not happening more. Right. Exactly, right? right. But I'm like, why isn't it happening more? And wh like, how 
genius is it and yet obvious right that a car can be powered by the sun and that will actually like cut down in fuel emissions right. the cost of fuel Mm -hmm. And you think about it, cars drive on roads. Usually everything is clear cut along the road. So as long yeah. as there's a lot of shading and everything. So it's really charging as it goes as well. Mm -hmm. Right? Like I feel like it's, sure. it's just all of the time going to, well. I just sure. feel like, like I know like it's not going to, it's not going to make as much energy from the sun as you're using, right. but it's going to supplement. Yeah. And, and so from that, I mean, so switching to electric cars, the, the problem, if you will, is that now we need to switch to plugging it into electricity and that electricity could be dirty electricity, electricity. Mm -hmm. yeah. like uh, who's, uh, who's using coal still right right a and mm -hmm. and those kinds of things so and here's like a clean option that it's just there the power is there and we're not utilizing and i heard that there are some like there's mm -hmm. dead zones in in spots where you can overdrive mm -hmm. um between charge stations like there's not enough there's not an sure. there aren't enough charge stations yeah. to get you where you need to go, mm -hmm. and so if you had something that would bridge the gap like this, yeah. right, get you a little bit more of or fuel like efficiency out of your a car. hotel in the desert where yeah. you can park and kick your feet up and watch a show while your car charges from the sun. There you yeah. go, uh, perfect. I actually am shocked that solar panels aren't used more often. Mm -hmm. Just it's in true. general. You right? know what I think it is? Yeah. Is we're so dependent on 120 volts and 240 volts. So mm -hmm. everything has to be like converted to right. those higher voltages. But mm -hmm. what if, and I'm thinking single board computers, right? <laughs> so we're, we're really getting used to totally. using things like Raspberry Pis and the Odroid XU4s and now like the H2s and like these are mm -hmm. devices that are using five volts. Right. Some of them. But yeah. And I'm, I think about Pine 64, a lot of their boards use five volts of electricity. So mm -hmm. why can't you pull that off of a battery that right. powers up to 12 volts just off the battery alone? This yeah. is pretty timely because today is the 16th anniversary of that big blackout. Really? Yeah. No. Today. Here in Ontario? Yeah, the Ontario was no like way. part of the state of New York. 16 years? 16 years Thank ago, we know. had that, yeah, we had that blackout. It lasted Am I that days. old? I know. I, I am that old, too. My daughter isn't even 16. I was at work when it happened. <laughs> That's how old I am. I was Aww. I was at Walmart when the power went out oh, really? of all places, and people are just Walmart. like, what's happening? What is this? I yeah. remember on my way home from work, everybody was giving things away because... Like they, I guess it's every, the apocalypse. It was the apocalypse. Yeah, yeah the, and stores <laughs> couldn't keep their frozen goods true. any longer. That's true. So like we're talking a 36-hour power outage. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah. Uh, Darn. The sky was beautiful and buried. Oh, I, re totally I remember by <laughs> the by the end of it, I was like, "Don't open the fridge! Don't <laughs> open the fridge!" Closed. Yeah, it's like the milk is gonna go bad if you open the fridge. <laughs> it's like that's how everybody was. And b people were yeah. running out of gas because gas yeah. pumps and and couldn't such power couldn't, yeah. couldn't power. Couldn't power. Couldn't charge so, you. So if we mm -hmm. go back to solar panels now, mm -hmm. if you and I'm not saying the whole world could be powered by solar panels, but right. we could have enough of a backup to bridge us for a while. What if it just started with supplementing right. our need for 110 volts? There you go. Yeah. Right? What if I could take like my my flat panel monitor that uses five volts of power mm -hmm. and use or or even charge my computer battery, my laptop battery with 12 volt power coming off of a, a solar panel. Yeah. Like why somewhere? Why don't right? we start doing that? And now we we're also seeing it. So the price was prohibitive, right? right? Mm -hmm. Now and, and I just think about Amazon because like we all shop Amazon and they're a partner of the show, so you mm -hmm. can shop through them through our links and that will support us. But uh, that aside, prices have come down from like five hundred dollars a panel to here we are in twenty nineteen for a hundred and hundred and forty bucks. Mm -hmm. You can yep. get uh, an 80 or 100 watt panel. Right. For 180 bucks, you can get the panel plus the the uh, device, the the board that needs to uh, convert it to the to yeah, plug like in the battery too, and everything else. Yeah. I wonder yeah. if that new spot in Toronto that that 
is it Google Alphabet's doing that new city in Toronto? Mm -hmm. oh, or yes. not new city, the, the new sidewalk something. Sidewalk Labs yeah. kind of thing. Sidewalk yeah. Labs. Yeah. I wonder, I bet you there's going to be a ton of solar panels in that area. <laughs> oh, yeah. Right? They're going to have solar panel, probably walkways that stay, like, warm enough that they don't ice over. Like, it's going yeah. to be, it's going to be oh, transformational. That makes oh, yeah. I think. Ameridroid is just saying in our, our Discord that they, in fact, also sell solar panels with the built-in regulators. That's handy. So then oh, I start totally. to think about, and I like that he also threw in the, the proper word. So I'm like, the thing that you plug all the things into. <laughs> The regulator, the regulator is built into the panel. <laughs> so now all of a sudden, like, the, isn't that yeah. the perfect scenario for like um, your, your surveillance camera? Your wise cam exactly. is five volts. Your wise cam is five volts. Hello. That's all it is. Your router is possibly five volts, mm -hmm. maybe, yeah. maybe nine volts or something like that, right? So mm -hmm. all these things can be powered off of one of those panels. Yeah. And if you've got enough amperage, enough wattage to be able to power several devices in chain, mm -hmm. then, hey, you could actually do a lot with solar mm -hmm. and then, yes. you know, supplement it with, a, with uh, like, like electricity hyper, out of the yeah. wall so, so that if there is no sun one day, then it charges it up. I just think, hey, maybe maybe it's time to look at this kind of stuff. It's I want to get a little battery. Like, yeah. When I was traveling to Newfoundland, I thought to myself, it's so windy here. Why aren't there more turbines? Why aren't there mm -hmm. more just backyard wind turbines? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? Uh, why? But I think it's just the connection between the idea and putting it into practice. Sure. Now mm -hmm. more people are putting these solar panels into practice. Mm -hmm. More people will be harnessing the power of the earth to yeah. make... Yep electricity. Now I'm like picturing a hybrid car with solar panels on the roof with a wind <laughs> turbine like in, the right place, yeah. it's in place anyway. of the like, radiator. Hey, it's like pulling the air in and just, just wild, right? there you go. Yeah, like let's just do this. You just stop wherever you are and instead of like juicing up your car, you're just selling your excess energy that you yeah. created. There you go. <laughs> yeah, the, charging the electrical company is paying you <laughs> to right. drive for once. Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Google Health's so-called augmented reality microso microscope has proven surprisingly accurate at detecting and diagnosing cancerous tumors in real time. The device is essentially a standard microscope decked out with two extra components, a camera and a computer running AI software with an NVIDIA Titan XP GPU to accelerate the number crunching. The camera continuously snaps images of body tissue placed under a microscope and passes these images to a convolutional neural network on the computer to analyze. In return, the neural net spits out, in real time allegedly, a heat map of the cells in the image, labeling areas that are benign and abnormal on the screen for doctors to inspect. Google researchers tried using the device to detect the presence of cancer in samples of breast and prostate cells. The algorithms had a performance score of 92% when detecting cancerous lymph nodes in breast cancer and 93% for prostate cancer. The size of the images used in this experiment measure 5120 by 5120 pixels. That's much larger than what's typically used for today's deep learning algorithms, which have millions of parameters and require billions of floating point operations just to process images as big as 300 by 300 pixels. To cope with these larger images, the convolutional neural network, which is based on Google's Inception V3 architecture, breaks them up into little patches that are analyzed individually. Although they used it to study cancer, they believe the device might prove useful for other applications and is cheaper than conventional whole slide scanners by about one or two magnitudes. That sounds wow. amazing. Yeah. I love so how cool. AI is impacting I, yeah. healthcare and it's the world in general. I, it blows my mind. That accuracy is incredible for something that is not mm -hmm. cost prohibitive. Like it's so much cheaper than regular oh, yeah. full slide images. I would imagine yeah. smaller too. I mean, like this yeah. is a, a a digital microscope, and and nowadays, like with like the Cadis Vim three with five, what is it, five point one teraflops of Jeez. NPU, like. This is ridiculous. Wow. So, like, couldn't you, like, use that to power it instead of a big PC with a bunch of NVIDIA cards? Yeah. Like, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> That's where this whole thing is going. It's like everything's getting smaller and faster and smaller yeah. and we're faster. Not, we're probably not that far from the time when we just do this as the health. Hey. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. looking forward oh to look that. at that. Cancer. <laughs> it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. yeah. You almost had cancer. Hypospray. Boom. 
Yeah. There you yes, go. Please. Oh, I love, I'm still, I love Star Trek. I'm still blown away when I when I was doing my facility placement and I was mm-hmm. taking people's temperatures. It's just like a little, like it looks like a little gun. You just yeah, like, it's just a heat ding. gun. You're like, <laughs> oh yeah, you're fine. Neat. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So is this so is cool. a microscope that like accurately can find mm-hmm. cancer cells. Just amazing. And you think 92, 93 percent? Well, that's a pretty big margin of error as well. Yeah. But you've got to remember, too, that, okay, that's incredible, really, when mm-hmm. you think about it. Like, this yeah. is AI saying, okay, I'm analyzing this image from this, uh, from this microscope of these cells. Mm-hmm. Right. And I'm determining that there's a high probability that this is cancerous. So now this goes into a pile that the doctor now looks at. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. So what are we doing here? Is the computer, is the AI deciding you have cancer? No. The AI is saying this that one, mm. no chance that one's cancerous. You don't need to look at that doc. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So now the doctor who's already overtaxed for time, mm-hmm. who's really, really busy and trying to keep on top of everything. And uh, now the AI is saying you don't need to look at this pile. This pile, we know that these are not cancerous. Mm-hmm. This pile, there's a chance. So take a look at these ones. Mm-hmm. So how many have we now weeded out? How many f- negatives? Right. Exactly. Right. Are we so, ruling out? So. Which I I love the direction AI is taking. Mm-hmm. I can't I can't say enough about. We did that one. We did that interview from the book. I can't remember. Mm-hmm. Martin Ford. Yes. Yeah, when we were talking uh, about his book about uh, AI, specifically mm-hmm. um, the, um, oh, what is it called? Intelligence. It's artificial intelligence. Artificial. Smartical intelligence. Oh, you, you guys are it. doing this. Okay. Ro- Rob is, Rob is, is going to get the book. Oh. Okay, it's right there. Architects. Okay. Architects. Of Architects of Architects. Intelligence Ooh. by Martin Ford. So there if... Is. If you want to fall in love with AI, as mm-hmm. I have, that's the book for you. Oh, yeah. No, this is so an intriguing cool. read. It's written like interviews. Yeah. And uh, Martin uh, speaks with the people who are developing AI. Yeah. And goes a- and talks to them about how AI is about to change the world. Wow. And that's what Architects of Intelligence are. The Architects of Intelligence. Yeah. It's a very good book. So it's good yeah. read. Check it out. And put it on my uh, homework to do list. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Windows users, stop what you're doing because Microsoft has issued a critical warning across all versions of its platforms, including every version of Windows 10, and told users that they must act now. Posting in its security response center, Microsoft told users that it has discovered two critical remote code execution or RCE vulnerabilities which are wormable. This means that they could be weaponized to launch malware that jumps automatically from PC to PC spreading across the world without any action from the user. And there are potentially hundreds of millions of vulnerable computers. In a statement, Simon Pope, Microsoft's Director of Incident Response, confirmed the vulnerabilities affected, quote, all supported versions of Windows 10, including server versions, end quote. Back in March, Microsoft pegged Windows 10 numbers at 800 million. In addition to this, Pope confirmed that other affected versions of Windows are Windows 7 SP1, Windows Server 2008 R2 SP1, Windows Server 2012, Windows 8.1, Windows Server 2012 R2. These are important platforms, but with far less market share. Pope's stressed speed is of the essence, stating, quote, it is important that affected systems are patched as quickly as possible, end quote. While ZDNet warned users that it is now, quote, a race to patch before the attacks get underway, end quote. Microsoft warns that... An attacker could then install programs, view, change, or delete data, or create new accounts with full user rights. Oh, dear. I literally just updated just as I left my house, so I feel safer already. Mm -hmm. That's scary. This kind of malware, this, well, I'm not going to say malware, this kind of exploit yes just goes to show how you know, like when i talk about ransomware and i say you need to do this and you need to do this and you need to be knowledgeable about this well really when it comes down to these types of exploits it's mm-hmm. not the user's fault no 
it is often not the user's fault. And that's what I mean when I say ransomware is not the same kind of malware. Yeah. It's not the same kind of thing. Putting in an antivirus is not going to stop it. Mm -hmm. You need to be really diligent. And here they are saying, now it's time to update all of your Windows machines because we found this exploit. And it's not a case of if it's it gets exploited. No, this is a when. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen quickly, and it's going to happen hard if people aren't ready for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, especially now that it's in the public space. So if there's That's people it. that didn't know about it before, now they know about it. Oh, yeah. But, yeah, it's scary. As mm -hmm. soon as it gets out there, it's and like that's when the malware is The truth is of created. the matter is, and it's uh, horrible for me to say this, mm -hmm. but true, nobody really wants to update Windows. Yeah. It's a pain, right? They don't like, want to. Do it on a Friday at 3. Right. So that when the boss walks up and you're just slacking, you'll be like, huh, Windows, yeah. stop dating. And I don't know whether or not this is going to work after this update's done. So yeah. I might well, there's your the Monday morning, the right? yeah. There's your Monday morning. You can do oh, the update on Friday, messed up. Well, it's hard in like, corporate culture because like, what if you have certain software that you need a certain edition so you can't update any further, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's yeah. scenarios like that that do exist. So it's just mm -hmm. like, oof. I think hard. in that case, Henry, then it's important to find out, like get on to Microsoft TechNet and, and find out what the KB article is that applies to this particular mm -hmm. fix and install cool. just that patch, mm -hmm. if that's you. But that's not the average user. Mm -hmm. That's right. like a corporate user who is holding back packages on purpose. Mm -hmm. right. So scary stuff though, folks, and we can't reiterate enough, hey, they're, they're saying this is going to happen and it's a big exploit. It reminds me of Eternal Blue in a lot of ways and it's like... Mm -hmm. mm, you don't want to be... You don't want to be part of that. Yeah, you don't want to... And, and you, you're not going to have to do anything. It's just going to get in. It's an exploit in the operating system. Yep. You switch to Linux. So you could switch to Linux. That's a good there idea. There you go. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Hey, and it's idea of the month, Robbie. Switch to Linux. Yeah. <laughs> yes, please. How My personal favorite right now is Linux Mint 19. Really? Yeah. I'm really enjoying it. You're, you're a minty fresh guy. It's good to know. Yeah, I never used to like mint. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm like, bring on the winter mint. No, it's, it's really good. It's been stable. It's rock solid. I'm cool. using it in production, and I love it. Good. Yeah. Go. See? So, hey, if you're distro hopping and you so haven't tried mint yet, give it a try and say, cool. Rob, I sent me. Yeah, if this last story gave you the same taste in your mouth that it gave me, switch to mint. Linux mint. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Nice. Elon Musk has revealed the staggering cost of building a civilization on Mars. No doubt about it, constructing a city on a planet that's hundreds of, mil of millions of miles away is going to be expensive. In fact, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk estimates the cost to be anywhere, quote, between $100 billion and $100 trillion, according to a tweet from last week. To put that into that range into perspective, the project could cost us anywhere between 10% of the United States 2019 military budget and three times the U.S.'s 2018 tax revenue. In other words, it'll be a ridiculous amount of cash. To arrive at his estimation, Musk calculated the approximate future cost of sending a minimum payload to Mars, quote, to nearest order of magnitude, end quote, at $100,000 per ton. In 2017, Musk estimated it would be closer to $140,000 per ton. So if a million tons of cargo are required for a self-sustaining city, Musk said, as much, uh, Musk said as much during a July interview with CBS News, the total cost would come out to about $100 billion. For SpaceX to ever get a shot at starting construction of the first ever city on another planet, the company will have to get its Starship rocket off the ground first, and that's only the beginning. If it all goes well, the gigantic rocket could eventually ferry 100 tons of payload to Mars if SpaceX figures out a way to refuel the rocket in Earth orbit first. Hmm. This is so exciting. This story <laughs> sounded like a word problem in like. Yeah. <laughs> Could they <laughs> put mass. solar panels on the roof? Yeah, see? <laughs> there you go. Electric Fly vehicle. Closer you're all to good. The sun. It sounds to me like it's going to have to be nuke. Yeah. Plain and simple, right? Space. What are they powering this thing with? Rocket fuel? What is this fuel you speak of? Yeah. Wind power? I look no. at you like you, you should know the answer. No, no. It's I'm, like I'm so excited. Henry's though. a pilot. Why? Why? Why not? Why what? Space. Why, Why go to Mars? Why, Why set up a human civilization on, on Mars? Mars? 
Mars. It just doesn't seem like. Why not do it? Why not do it on the moon? Why not? Hey. Why not do spend one hundred trillion dollars on making Earth better? See, there's where's the adventure in that, Sasha? <laughs> I get what she's saying, though. It's like if we can't treat Earth. With respect, why should we go to another planet? Why are we taking a barren wasteland of a planet and putting people on it? <laughs> because, like, if to something happens on Earth... To see if we Earth, will be able to survive on Earth when we turn it into <laughs> yeah. a rotten, barren planet. But it's going to turn into Venus and go global warming is going to run away. Uh, question. Category 5 does not necessarily endorse these statements. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> I understand the, the need for adventure, Elon. I understand. Oh, it. yeah, yeah. And I actually like the idea that we might venture just for a little boo at the planet, but I don't know about setting up a civilization. <laughs> Well, that's a, real that's reason, a challenge. The real reason why he wants to go to Mars is that he forgot his car keys in the Tesla he sent in the space, Mars. so he has to go back and get it. No. Um, no. I don't know. I think, like, you can get so much from it, right? And, like, it's the initial investment. Like, that doesn't say all the technologies, all the experience you're going to get out of having, like, right. a base on Mars or something. Yeah. But I, I definitely see where Sasha was going with the entire, like, why should we go to Mars kind of situation. It's like, it's a venture. Come on. Yeah. like. It's the same reason why they went to North America and all the other things, right? Like, it's out there. That's interesting. Space. How much does it cost to build a city in general? Space. Like, that's yeah. what I would want to know. So, is it really out there? Well, it's, just, or it's like, like UPS on steroids. What's the ROI? Like, where is the ROI here? Or Are is there ROI like outside of Elon's? generations of Martians that are born there that re-enter our orbit. Mm -hmm. Like, are we, they like, really. our, our, can they come back to us? Can they be born there and come back to us? Be because sure. they would technically evolve in the sense that, like, their body would be, like, adapted to, I think it's, like, 0.6G. So, like, if they would come to Earth, oh. they'd be used to less gravity, so they would have health problems on Earth. That's not even mentioning the health problems going out there, right? Because, um, what was his name? Kelly, you know, like, the, the twin brothers? That yeah. Being in a year in space actually changed his DNA, right? Like, they're no longer twins. They're no longer identical twins wow. because right. their DNA's changed. So, so, so is he an alien, Matt? Technically, yeah. <laughs> kind of. Technically, he needs a new passport. And <laughs> But no, it's, I think it's a really interesting thing that we're getting involved with. But um, if Elon Musk has an extra seat, let, no. me, uh, let me know. <laughs> I, like, I like my home here. Just be back all. by next Wednesday, that's okay, all. Okay, see you then. <laughs> Uh, wow, I, I have so many thoughts going through my head. Like, what, what could be done? Right. And like, what are we going to find when we're there? Like, could there be a mining opportunity we're or things like that? Find probably the grass is not greener. I think it's always going to be a one-way <laughs> trip too. Yeah. Like, because you think about okay, well, they're they're trying to figure out how can we fuel up here on Earth, and get there. Right. Right. So get there, and figure out how to fuel up there. It ain't happening. Right. So you're going to have to, they're saying, refuel in Earth's orbit. So they're going to have to, like, meet halfway. Right? So they're going to have to never let their tank run beyond a certain yeah. amount. I can't see them being able to return then. Well, actually, it's because, you know what, the reason... Um, okay, the reason I don't talk about space law is I can go on forever about this stuff. <laughs> but um, have you heard about the Gateway Project in the sense that they want to have like a station uh, Sorry, in the, moon? the Stargate Project? Yeah, Stargate. You know, just see you later. Go through Stargate. <laughs> no, like they want to have like the Gateway, right? Mm -hmm. Orbiting the moon. Okay. Because if you've ever seen like the movie Moon or like any of those other movies that there's like helium-3 on the moon, which can be used as rocket fuel. Mm. So it's just like you could use the moon to power future missions wow. in the sense that you can refuel there. Yeah. And then you can go to like Jupiter yeah, for, for sure. the weekend. Yeah. Vacation on Titan or something. We need space docks Saturn. and everything else. I mean, they're just we got it, we've got it figured out, Elon. Just get a starship. So. Come on. Let's go. I'm going to just have a migraine thinking about all these people going <laughs> on the planet. <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, we've got to uh, take a quick look at CoinGecko. Here's what the crypto market looked like as of 1800 hours Eastern Time on Wednesday, August 14th, 2019. Bitcoin is uh, up a little bit, uh, gaining $140.81 US uh, at $10,177.91 US. Uh, Facebook Libra. Uh, is still not trading. Litecoin is uh, has also gained, and I should say we didn't look at these numbers last week. So, um, so these are uh, two weeks of gains uh, at eighty nine dollars and fifty eight cents. Ethereum is down. Uh, oh, and sorry, I should say Litecoin is actually up at one eighty eight 
37, which is the highest I've seen it. That's uh, like nearly double where it was two weeks mm -hmm. ago, which is pretty wow. fantastic. Um, Ethereum is at $188.37, losing $27. Monero is at $78.89 US. Torque is at 1.02 ten thousandths of a cent, and they're going through all kinds of changes right now, so mm -hmm. keep an eye on them. And TurtleCoin, uh, and I should say with Torque, yes, they're going through a lot of changes, but their value is going up, mm -hmm. and they're still a small coin. Cool. TurtleCoin uh, has lost a lot at 0 0.57, ten thousandths of a cent. So it's about half the value of Torque, where at one point they were neck and neck, right. uh, one to one. Uh, so do keep in mind, uh, cryptocurrency um, is a market that never closes. It's always volatile and it changes from day to day, moment to moment, because it's 24-7 and you never know what is going to affect it. So. Mm -hmm. I I did read something very cool about cryptocurrency in the news. Mm -hmm. New Zealand has made it legal to pay s uh, wages, salaries in cryptocurrency now. That's so cool. Way to go, New Zealand. So wow. I bet that you is that's a volatile way of payment. Yeah. yeah, method of payment. That's very risky. But it just goes to show. I mean, cryptocurrency it's until. The until yeah that's it but what it how can you project the future value of something that is volatile exactly. and like it, if you're paid x amount of bitcoin an hour yeah kind of but there's nothing to say bitcoin is going to be worth x on its on its futures yeah. it, it is going to be whatever it decides to be i'm going right. to stick with my dollar to be honest but, but, it, that's but just, it at least for now for you or against you that's the nature of a volatile market mm -hmm. once we see uh facebook's libra Yes. hit the market we're going to see is it possible to have a stable coin right. uh, currency like cryptocurrency yeah. is that going to be possible and if it is then maybe we'll finally have a way to be able to say hey yeah i'll take payment <laughs> in libra or whatever it happens to be maybe it'll help mm -hmm. stabilize the other markets as well yeah, yeah. There we'll see. Okay. We'll see. Big thanks to Roy W. Nash and our community of viewers for submitting stories to us this week. Thanks for watching the Category 5.tv newsroom. Don't forget to like and subscribe for all your tech news with a slight Linux bias. And for more free content, be sure to check out our website. From the Category 5.tv newsroom, I'm Sasha Rickman. And I'm Robbie Ferguson. And I'm Henry Bailey Brown. We've got to take a really quick break. When we come back, we're going to be looking how we can get rid of all those pesky pests in our house with no chemicals. Stick around. Welcome back. This is Category 5 Technology TV. We're kind of at that season at the end of, kind of nearing the end of summer when like oh. the fruit flies are all over the place. We got um, little tiny moths and yeah. gnats and all these little fly things that are zipping around. Now, I have a wise cam, and so yes. I really, <laughs> like, I capture them because it sets off these alerts and push yes. notifications every night at 3 a.m., and it turns out it's just a bug zipping around in <laughs> the, in the uh, infrared, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, whether you've got fruit flies in the house, uh, even mosquitoes gotten in through the door, house flies are another issue these, uh, like, the, over the, the next couple of weeks here in, uh, in Ontario, mm -hmm. and probably where you are as well. Um, you can look at an electronic device that's going to help to eliminate those. Yeah. So no chemicals needed, nothing else. Um, it's just something that you plug in and turn on. So I've got two to look at just really briefly so that we can say, you know, what is the difference? And I've had these for a couple of weeks just to try them. Nice. And uh, so I've got the traditional kind of electronic zapper. Mm -hmm. So this is the one that you plug in and turn on. And then we've got this new one that Whoa. is a lot Whoa. larger than I was expecting and looks like it could be like, from the future. Looks like one of those bladeless fans. fans yeah. It really does like look it. like a Dyson fan or something like that. Yeah, yeah. But it's it's on right now. Wow. And it's absolutely and there silent. There are no bugs in here. And there are no bugs in here. <laughs> so quick rundown. So this one zaps the insects and it works really, really well uh, mm -hmm. for any size. I mean, whether it's a fruit fly or a, a house fly uh, does it, like, or a moth. Does it attract them and zap yes. them? Yes. So what right. it actually does is this one. So there are there is a very similar way of attracting the insects between these two devices. Um, but this one is more visible to humans because it's pointed out. So you'll yeah. see there are actually LED lights. Mm -hmm. And these LED lights emit 
like a purple hue U- oh, okay. UV light that is actually set to, it's a frequency that m- mosquitoes and bugs are attracted to. They like so it. they want to fly into that light. If they fly into this light, now there's a grill here that is going to say, ah, bad move, bug, right? Yeah. Okay. So this works really, really well. Mm-hmm. However, there is a caveat with this. Uh-oh. It tripped my circuit breaker. That's so good. <laughs> it looks like a toy. Yeah, but when a fly... Oh, no. So a couple of things. F- for one, it can be very, very loud. So when a bug flies into it, yeah. sometimes it's like a... Oh like a God. big... Okay. Okay? Yes. So that can be really... So it sounds kind of violent? Mm, a little bit. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, a little bit gory. And certainly, you know, if you're putting it in your kitchen and stuff, just yeah. the thought, it's, it seems almost unsanitary all of a sudden when you, when you know that it's happening. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of gross. But, and can we just move along to the other one? Yeah. Extra okay. protein. So I, but I have to tell you this. So it works really well. It tripped my circuit breaker. That's a big no-no. Yeah. But it does work really well. So you want to plug this in somewhere where it's, it's not plugged into a circuit like the your fridge is on right oh, okay. because don't you don't you TV. don't want to turn it on and walk away and then have your fridge turn off right, right. if True. that happened now i should say it's been plugged in for over a week and it only happened once okay. Okay. but it happened That's good. right okay. i plugged my water cooler in on the same i guess panel circuity thing yeah. as my yeah. tv okay and when it clicked on and off i ended up getting a big line down oh, my no. tv it like permanently oh no oh. i break things that's my thing oh dear right i was okay. still under warranty but oh okay. good but okay. I, like i shouldn't it. have that yeah what i'm saying Perhaps, perhaps. Yeah. Oh. So I like that it worked, but I don't like that it was noisy and that it yeah. tripped the breaker. And it is pretty bright. Like, Becca turns it off because she doesn't like the brightness of it. Ooh. This one here, as you can hear, it's on right now, and there, it's completely silent. I don't know if you guys can even... What? Like, I'm uh, <laughs> so how this one works is it uses that light to attract yeah. the insects. But yeah. when they fly in, as you said, it's like a, it looks like a one of those Dyson fanless uh, or bladeless fans. Yeah. And it really is. It's, a, it's what they call a cyclone. And oh. it pulls them down into a reservoir. Wow. And Are there bugs okay. in there? N- no, there aren't because I cleaned, because I cleaned up before. <laughs> <laughs> but there were um, some moths and things like that. So, um, so it actually pulls them down in there and dehydrates them and kills them. Huh. It's like a bug dehydrator. But it's silent. <laughs> it's quiet. It's... It's I nice. want that one though. Put it, it in the corner. It just, it just sits there. Yeah, you just put, put it, it, and it, when the lights go out, it attracts them and into it, it, and it, and and does it have a gone. nice purple glow when the lights? <laughs> oh yes, yeah. The so LEDs cool. are like. Where do a, I get that one? <laughs> um, you can get you can get either one of these at cat5.tv slash bugs. Nice plural, um, but um, th- that oh. one I think this is the one that is the clear winner for me. Yeah, and it's um, USB as well. Like it is. I've got it plugged into my laptop right now for the demonstration, but it does come with a like a. Uh, adapter. An adapter as well for That's AC. Cool. Um, I should say though, it's huge. It's a lot bigger than I was expecting. Yeah. So it's it's like a centerpiece to right. zen- to but get bugs. You could put something on here, like a yeah, flower you could or put something, a you know? pretty like rock or something on there. Like use it as like a cup holder, paper mache. Hey, it something. would it would perfectly fit an Amazon Echo dot. There you go. So That's there you go. True. Right? Put it and up it there. And it would never be buggy. Have <laughs> <Ta-dum>. <laughs> oh, nice. You could put your camera on there and see them flying in. There you go. I don't know. Anyways, cat5.tv slash bugs. They both worked very, very well. This mm-hmm. one worked very well. This one worked exceptionally well. Uh, but this one is completely silent. And as long as you don't mind that it takes up a bigger footprint, it is, uh, it's probably the nicer of the two. Nice. It just You don't even know it's running. Uh, so that is all the time that we have this this week, folks, it's been so great having you here. Thanks to these two. Hey. Thanks hey. to you. Don't forget, we are on Patreon. We'd love to have your support. Hey, if you want to just throw $5 a month into the tip jar on Patreon, it's a great way to support the show. And uh, and incidentally, you're going to get access to some behind-the-scenes stuff. You're going to be able to get access to some things that are only available to patrons. You can find out more about the perks right there at patreon.com slash category 5. Nice and easy. We're also on Twitter. At Category 5 TV. We're on, uh, we're on YouTube as yeah. Category 5 TV and mm-hmm. LinuxTechShow.com. Right. Check out both of those and subscribe. Click the bell. And 
Um, also, we're on Roku's channel store, and you can get us on Kodi um, by simply going to github.com slash cat5tv and go into the repositories, and you'll see our Kodi channel there. Unfortunately, Plex has discontinued channel support, so I'm looking oh. into uh, whether or not that is something that uh, we're going to be able to continue. We do have a Plex channel, but I'm not sure if that's going to work with the upcoming releases of Plex, which is unfortunate. Uh, of course, our main website does bring everything together. We have RSS feeds. We've got, um, we're on, like, Google podcasts and everything else so check out category5.tv for more uh, more ways to connect with us have a wonderful week everybody see you next Wednesday bye